Mm -hmm. The only thing I need to do today is go to
Good morning. Here we go. You guys can see <clears throat> still in the middle. Upgrading. We'll take a look at that. Um, but yeah, welcome to the stream. Monday morning. Beautiful outside. It was beautiful yesterday too. Hasn't gotten so hot yet. Being outside right now. Really nice. Um, yesterday my daughter had a dance competition. Team. So that was a lot of fun to go hang out. So excited. Your team. So the competition, competitions, dance are kind of strange, I guess is the way every competition has their own rankings. Um, but a lot seem to follow like silver, gold, platinum. Ranking. So when when they go compete, um, their dances are scored, and then if their scores fall in certain ranges, they get um, like gold, high gold, or silver, high silver, and then just platinum. Um, so team on two of their dances got platinum, and then high gold for the other dance. And for her age group, um, their hip hop dance. They got a platinum on. Um, also, scored the highest um, at the competition. They got jackets. It was just really fun to watch her. She was just so happy, looking around and just having a good. So that was a lot of fun yesterday. Um, right now I'm just using NX to migrate our different packages. This is just a lot of manual stuff. You, you usually do every once in a while anyway. Um, I like to take care of this stuff pretty regularly. And I take care of this stuff at work. For the project that I'm on now, we we have a platform team. Um, they do a pretty good job of maintaining packages for a lot of other things, but the project that I'm working on right now, um, my team's the only one that's working on. It. I have a lot of but yeah. Um, that's just really. Simple. Um, the nice thing about um, the nice thing about NX is migrate script. Um, if it detects so the way um, like ng upgrade works is it goes out and it uses npm. Looks at the packages, downloads them. If the packages have a special generator on the ng update generator, up, upgrade gen, I don't remember which one it is. Um, but there's a special generator. If that exists, then um, ng upgrade um, will run that script automatically. Um, the difference between nx migrate and ng update is that when NX migrate encounters those files, um, it puts them into the migration such. And the nice thing about that is that um, in the past I've had um, migrations that have broken. And one time the reason the migrations broke was because of the order that um, file was trying to run them. So I was able to go into the migrations.json and move that file that had problems to the end. There was another file that had problems. I was just able to remove it. So that's that's the really nice thing about 
NX migrate. The other thing is you can rename the files. Um, so say you want to run a whole group of upgrades and then run the migrations. Um, you can do that too. So here you saw that um, I upgraded Angular Core, um, and then I upgraded the CLI, and then I upgraded the schematics, and then I upgraded the CDK. Well, not in that order, but um, I did CDK and then schematics. Um, but I like to do that as an atomic upgrade. And if there are any um, migrations.json, I also like to use those migrations.json all at the same time too. Um, with ng upgrade, you can't do that. It would run the migrations and then the next one. And then, um, with um, nx migrate, there are migrations in that chain. Then I just rename them. Um, and then when the new ones are built, I rename those and I keep doing that. And then once I've got all the migrations, I put them all back together in one migrations file. Just run them and um, the, I upgraded them. I get all the up, uh, everything run at the same time. Created Angular. Oh crap! Before I did this. And this was an upgrade that I saw on Friday, but NGRX Signals um, upgraded. And the nice thing is that if you upgrade NGRX Signals, it typically grabs the ESLint plugin. Um, MNX, great. Signals. We should see that it grabs the ESLint plugin. I typically do NGRX along with Angular at the same time, um, any of their files, um, because they're typically um, they typically mirror each other pretty well. They typically match the Angular um, versions and stuff like that, and rely on the same packages. Um, so I typically group NGRX into into the same upgrades when I do Angular. You'll notice down here that it recognized that it needed to grab the ESLint plugin. You know, so we're good to go. No migrations were created. Yeah, let's go um, ahead and get that, get that going. Um, but today, there's there's some other stuff that we can do. Great for that. Let's go ahead and stage that. Great Angular and GRX. And now we're on to that stuff. Um, so there are um, a couple of last steps that I'll take in upgrading. Um, I like NCU for anything that doesn't have, that won't have like a, an Angular upgrade path of some sort. Um, the last thing we want to do is upgrade Analog.js, the platform. Um, that's going to grab all the other Analog.js stuff. I'm going to try taking off this too. Um, I originally added tan stack thinking we were going to use it. Um, we're going to be doing some. What we're going to be doing some. I'm on a blank right now. Um, CMS stuff, content management system, right? Um, and so um, I'm not sure that we're going to use tens because we aren't going to be writing our own backend. We're going to be using the backend of an existing CMS project or product. And again, if you guys have any strong feelings about a CMS product you'd like to see, 
uh, let me know. Oh, send me um, a message on Twitter, um, on LinkedIn, or you know, comment in the in the um, comments on um, you know, various places where you can watch my restreams. Um, and then, you know, you could also just message it here in the chat. Um, but I'm curious. This might break. And I might have to add that tan stack stuff back in. And after the stream today, I may just remove the tan stack stuff. Because it, it hasn't been updated um, since 1.0 release of analog. Um, and so, um, yeah. So it's still trying to look for the TRPC 1.0 or 1.20. Um, that doesn't exist, which is why I have to add this. Um, and this is also the nice thing about um, NX Migrate is if I run, if I were to run ng upgrade um, right now on the Analog JS platform, it would break um, and wouldn't be able to upgrade until I remove TRPC. Um, but with NX Migrate, I can just tell it, hey, grab this version of TRPC instead of the one that the platform is asking for. And this works just fine. So there, there's some nice tools with NX Migrate. And a good reason why you should take a look at using just NX for even just package management. It adds a whole bunch of nice new things. This this should be the last um, NX migration that we'll do, um, and then we'll use NCU um, NPM check update. But it works with PNPM, Yarn, and NPM. So whatever your package manager out of those three, I've never used Bun, um, so I don't know if it works with Bun. Um, well, there, those are the four package managers that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, I think there might be. I mean, there's there's Deno, right? Um, but I haven't seen much on Deno in a long time. There were no migrations for this upgrade, so we'll go ahead and run this. We will check this all in. Oh, this was something I was going to mention while that was going on. Um, I was accepted to the ARC for Windows well, um, beta. And so I have access to ARC on my Windows machine. Um, I think it's just... I think it's just generally available on on the Mac. But yeah, you have to get on the wait list for Windows. I believe it's just generally available for the Mac. Yeah, iOS is down now. You just download it. I think you can do it with brew and with that too. But if if you're interested in Arc, um, you can just get it from their site. Um, I just usually Google Arc browser, and that's how I find it. But I want to try out the Arc browser, get to know it better. Um, underneath it is a Chromium browser, so uh, all of my uh, plugins from like Chrome and stuff work. So that's good. Um, I, I do want to see how it works, how, how different it is. If if it winds up getting in the way, we'll just go back to Chrome. But I want to see what the developer experience is like. So let's see, we upgraded a log. 
go. So the last thing um, I do once I once I've done everything that I know has an Angular upgrade, and you could go and NX migrate everything. There's no problem to it, uh, but there are just some things that are faster to do through no check update because I can do multiple at the same time. Um, so I'm going to upgrade all of the stuff here that are patch upgrades. I'm going to upgrade the miners. I'm not going to do ESLint because there are some breaking changes in that that could potentially affect our NX. Um, but I will grab the SWC helpers. So um, to do that, all you need to do is add the dash U flag and the dash I flag. The dash U flag is the interactive for NCU, and the dash I flag, or no, the dash I is interactive, the dash U is upgrade. So when we run this, um, we're going to get a nice little view um, where I can toggle things with the spacebar. I can use A to toggle everything. I'm going to toggle everything. I'm going to turn off this upgrade. Everything else I'm good with. TypeScript. <laughs> Actually, let's, let's make sure that TypeScript's okay. So, new tab. Here, we need to look at version compatibility. I guess I'm going to have to click a lot of those. Deployment? Already here. Tools, but practice. I think it's under keeping up to. And yeah, following the Angular blog is a good way to go about keeping things up to date. And reference. Angular versioning and releases. I don't know where to find this stuff. There we go. Versioning. I thought I, maybe I spelled compatibility wrong. Um, we're on Angular 17. And it says that we can use any version of TypeScript between 5.2 and less than 5.5. So 5.4.5 is less than the 5.5 minor. So it looks like we can use any patch version, which is good. And I, I love this table. The table is very nice. I refer to it quite often, know what I can and can't use. So TypeScript's good. Um, Cypress, these are all minors, patch versions. Shouldn't be breaking stuff. Anyway. Then once I've selected everything, um, you can see that if we just press enter, it's going to upgrade. It's going to say, hey, we'll change, we've changed the package.json for you. Do you want us to run npm install? And hitting enter here automatically defaults to yes. Um, but now it's just going to go out. It's going to grab everything. And again, it's highlighting everything for us, letting us know what's going on. And we can see up here that it has detected that we're using pnpm, so it's going to use pnpm which is really nice. And let's going to take a look. Let's we go take a look at GitHub. OK, separates the tabs. I didn't see that one. But inside of here, um, do I have Dependabot set up? I've got Renovate set up, and it gives me this nice dashboard. 
that will tell me about stuff that I need to upgrade. Um, and it, it will show me, you know, what, what's upgrading and what's included in here. You have all sorts of stuff like that. Um, but go take a look at our settings. I haven't done any branch protect. No, I have. You have branch protection that's preventing merging straight into master. Um, that's fine. Um, code security and announce. So this is something that I didn't turn on. And this turns on Dependabot in your uh, in your project. So I'm going to turn this one on. Because it's going to um, notify me of any out-of-date packages. I know that there are a couple that I saw that have issues. Yeah, and then once that's on, I like to turn on this. Um, it will allow Dependabot to turn on alerts for things that have dependency issues. Um, so um, let me turn this one on to And I may turn this one on. I'm not going to turn on the Dependabot version updates um, because I use um, Renovate for that. The other thing we can do if we want to is, you know, we could set up code quality. Um, it, it sets things up nicely uh, that every time we push, it'll run a code quality. Um, I'll set that up sometimes too. Um, I don't have CI CD set up, so I'm not going to do like run failures and stuff like that. Um, secret scanning is also a good one to turn on. Um, secret scanning, um, and then push protection is also another good one. Um, basically, what this will do is GitHub will scan anything that you're trying to push. Um, and if it detects any kind of key or things like that, um, then it will prevent those. So we should see, with all this stuff turned on, I do want to make sure, yeah. We've got those rules all turned on. So we should see a new pull request. Um, so these ones were all in, opened by Renovate. You can see that here. I guess changes I had made don't require a YAML file. Um, and so um, we didn't get any new top 14 security thing. Now we've got all of the security stuff on. And now that we've enabled that, we can look at Dependabot. Um, and we can see that Dependabot has found um, stuff in different tools. Um, and this is really good. So um, this path traverse, um, traversal error, um, we can see that this is a high priority one and you know it prioritizes them. Anything moderate or above, you should probably take a look at. Um, but this path traversal um, is going to set your, got to be on um, Webpack Dev Middleware 5.3 or later to fix it. We can see that we're on 5.3.3. And it gives you details about the, about the issue too. And even POC exploit can get, they can, they can show you how your package can be exploited. Um, and then potential impact of it. So, um, you know, 
Pendabot security scanning is actually really powerful and something that I, I like to turn on. Um, the downside to it <clears throat> is um, with all these alerts, I just sent myself 14 emails. So it started to get um, a little bit crazy. Um, that's cool. So you can auto triage stuff, huh? I think I turned the stuff on. I don't have a private repository. I'm, like none of the stuff I'm doing is private repository. So um, this is all public. So because it's all public, um, you get a lot of free stuff from GitHub, right? Just to encourage you to do open source or develop, you know, build in public type stuff. Um, but anyway, got a little bit distracted there. Um, let's go ahead and stage the files. And I usually just call this update dependent. And, and that's that. Um, so yeah, typically I will upgrade NX, then I will do Angular, then I will do anything else that has, um, that will have like a, an Angular upgrade module to it basically. Um, and then after that, um, I group everything else together in dependencies, but I like to break these all out into atomic commits because if for whatever reason we have issues, it will, um, it's easier to go back and be like, oh, this is what I did. So, you know, if, if I don't like this, um, you know, we can um, revert this commit. And what that will do is it will create a patch that will go in and revert everything. That's why I like to be atomic with. Oh, go. The, the next thing to do is just do um, pnpm nx and let's serve our blog and just make sure it builds after all the stuff we did. Um, and while that's going, I did upgrade to WebStorm, um, the release candidate. Um, this one is, a, it's got a dot one um, release preview. Um, on stream, I like my WebStorm to stay as stable as possible. So go in and I'm probably going to need to upgrade some plugins here. Um, do you guys see that <laughs> this has been marked as deprecated for like five years, right? Um, NG comp, I think they, they mentioned that they might be undeprecating NGD. I need to remember, I need to go back and look at my notes, but somebody was talking about that recently that this um, may no longer be deprecated. And in fact, we could probably go look docs and just see that's in. I don't have Arc set as my default browser um, yet. Go ahead and copy that URL over. Still marked as deprecated. This is really good. Um, I love this comment right here. Be, sh be sure to include the host selector before ngd. Host is a pseudo selector. Um, oh, and it even talks about it here. Um, and I think it's an Angular specific. Um, maybe not. Yes, as host. Nope, not. So it's, it's part of the Shadow DOM spec. Um, and there's a lot of nice stuff you can do with it. You can, you can say that, hey, this has to be inside of the host contact. You also have like host like that. So host is a really nice feature to use. Uh, but with Angular, the way it does its um, 
way it does. I don't want to say it's Dom piercing, I guess would be a good way to put it. Um, or Dom encapsulation and style encapsulation is this host pseudo selector. Um, when it's compiled, each component in compilation gets a, and you've seen it before, you've seen like ng host or ng content or things like that, where um, those attributes are applied. And then these styles are given that selector, the attributes. And that's how it encapsulates this. So this ng deep only applies to, uh, this only applies to the content that's affected by this host. Um, and so that's part of the issue we were having with view transition before, um, and we'll get back to that. I spent a bunch of time reading after the last stream. So we'll figure that out. I'm curious why it doesn't think we have pipe here. Interesting. Just want to make sure that my plugins all look good. And it looks like I don't have any upgrades. So I think we're good. So I won't need to be restarting this. Um, all right, let's, let's make sure that everything's served. It looks like it did. Go to arc, open, local host. 4200. And here we go. There we go. There's there's our app. And I think I can I think I can create a new space. Here. What that does? Um, no, I can delete that. Can I there we go. Create a new space. Call this space the stream space. Um yeah, I'll put it in the default profile and that's interesting. I can give each of my spaces a different color, huh? Kind of like blue. That's cool that I can go light or dark. So we'll create this space. Oh. That's interesting. So this space is my default space. That's cool. I guess I need to learn the key commands to move between these. Okay, so that allows me to add new spaces. Is the key. I I'm so tempted to click that, but I won't do that on stream. Um, there is some slowdown here with these menus. One and Alt two. Okay. So if I. Oh, nice. I hope that sound isn't coming through. Let me <laughs> let me check the streaming stuff. Um, hey, schizophrenic web developer. What kind of app is this? Um, it's a blog that we're building. Um, so so yeah, we're we're building a blog, and we've got all the layout stuff in place. Um, 
And, you know, we've, we've added theming stuff to it. So um, we're using, um, we're using um, Daisy UI. Um, and Daisy UI has a whole bunch of themes built in. Um, and you can actually create your own themes too, right? So if we go here and we go Daisy UI, So inside of here, let's see. down here at the bottom, on the themes, they've got a theme builder right here, theme generator. So with the theme generator, um, you can generate any kind of theme. So you could come in here and create your own theme, um, export it, and then use that in Daisy UI also. You could also craft it by hand. There's good documentation on how to do that. But we are using, we're using Daisy UI for the UI. And then um, within here, we've got the ability to view all the articles. Then, you know, if we click on a specific article, and this isn't done yet. Um, this is where we're, we're getting ready for CMS stuff, right? Um, but um, this, this is where the articles will be. We'll add stuff there. Uh, we'll be using Markdown. So we're using Analog.js on the back end. Um, so you can see anywhere where we're using. Uh, not really in the compile. Um, you can see the Daisy stuff added here, um, but we're also using V. And um, the, the thing about analog is that it always will be, be doing the same. One thing <clears throat> that as we add the CMS, I want to take a look at using the API path um, to proxy the CMS for in our Angular application. So we can just call the API path from anywhere. Um, and then we'll build the API behind the scenes. So we'll be taking a look at that too. Uh, but one thing I wanted to talk about, see if it's on the blog site, right? Blog JS. We'll go to the analog site, analogjs.org. I need to remember that. There are a couple of things that I just keep in my head. Um, this one is probably a good one. Um, we'll also put this up into the space um, so that it sticks around with us. It is a bit crazy that anytime I hit that Alt 2, and there might be a Windows key combination that causing that. Um, I'll need to take a look at that, but I get this ding in my ears. Um, so <laughs> luckily I've got my desktop audio muted. Um, I think if I turn that on, you guys would probably hear it. So if I swap back, then I swap to it. Yeah. I'm going to keep the desktop muted. You guys don't have to hear about that or hear that. Um, but I did want to take a look in for concepts under experimental, under the single file components. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Talking about this, um, they don't have. Yeah, see, they've got the define metadata stuff in here. Um, so this hasn't been upgraded. Um, the other thing that that's cool about um, analog is that they spell out right. Um, so you can't use the template template flag in your metadata. Um, you can't. You can't set standalone defaults. Um, analog single file components rely on standalone. Change detection is always on push. You can't use a style section. You have to use a style tag. You can't use the outputs decorator. Um, you have to use the output uh, signal API. You can't use the inputs decorator. You have to use the input signal API. Uh, the other thing you could use here is the model also, right? Input and model. Um, do similar things. Model gives you both an output and an input signal, um, but it's also a modifiable signal.
But like this host stuff, we're going to do something different. And let me go find. So here we go. We've got one from Chow. Go ahead and bring this one up. And I want to make sure that this isn't going to like put any passwords. Good thing I did that. I've got to enter some stuff for my authenticator app. Uh oh. I hate when my authenticator app changes right in the middle. Okay. There we go. Now we're signed in. We can go back live. There we go. Um, oh, why did you do that? That's okay. Paste it back in. And then the next thing I want to do is just bring this up. So this is what we're looking at today. Um, in the past, and we've done this quite a bit, um, so in your defined metadata, you know, you've got the host classes, click, and then background styles, right? Um, and then, you know, you've got this stuff here. The crazy thing is I've never done a host binding for an event. Um, and I was trying to think of ways we could do that. But anyway, now, instead of having to do the defined metadata, um, now we can just put them straight onto the template tag. Um, and that's going to do host bindings for it behind the scenes, which is really cool. Um, so what I want to do is go through and look at all of our defined metadata and change it all over to template tags. So let's let's start with that, right? So Control Shift F, we're going to do um, define metadata here, and like this one. Um, We've got a couple of things here, like the article and stuff like that, but this whole fine metadata can just be taken out. Um, we can just say, hey, we want our class. And actually, copy and paste this. And it's doing this, we do that. Then I've got an extension in place, not working. Change our quotes, toggle quotes. There we go. So now, you know, we've got it. Toggle quotes. Crap or this, this. Crap or sh that now part of ring manipulation. I don't need a toggle quotes. That just part of it. I love sorting stuff, indent, unindent.
So under string manipulation, So um, let's let's see if I can do key bind. Inside of not key bindings. Um searching. Configure terminal key bind right here. So under the main menu, edit, and bottom, ring manipulation. Here for string. Here we go. Manipulation right here. Um, and then under here, there's my string manipulation, and then very bottom, there was wrap if be I want to set it to add a keyboard shortcut and my shortcut here is going to just be control quote I don't care um I'll keep the other one um, because in grid, we might want something there. Um, the other thing I saw in here is abbreviation. I need to figure out what that does. Anyway, tell me to download the preview. Um, but now if I hit control quote here, that works. Let's go back to key bindings. Wrap. Shift between. Oh, I didn't save it. I didn't save it. We'll quote. Okay. Uh, field one will apply it. Okay. And now when I hit control quote, boom, boom. Boom. Um, so the last thing I want to do is just go to the plugins. So our plugins. Inside of here, let's go ahead and search for toggle quotes. Quote. Oh, never mind. This is a plugin. Okay. And this plugin adds a whole bunch of nice things about it, right? Um, so um, I've got similar plugins in VS Code for this, but it's always nice to, um, you know, say say I want to make this um, this variable here uh, like snake case, right? I can do that. Um, and do it very, very quickly. So um, I, I love plugins like that, that allow me to go faster and give me better tools for what I'm trying to do. I typically will have a bunch of plugins, but um, this plugin is particularly helpful, just being able to just quickly toggle my quotes, right? And I, I wind up using that kind of stuff a lot. Anyway, we can take out the defined metadata here. Um, and so this is our secondary article that we just changed. We can go back to our application and go back to our application. 
I just said back to our application. So um, if we go back to the home, these are our secondary applications here. And if we inspect this, and that is small, um, but we should be able to see on our secondary article right here, um, we've got our flex grow, flex column. And then, so the classes that we added in the host binding are still there. Um, and, you know, then the extra classes that we've added in the templates are there also. So, hey, Marcus, happy Sunday to you. Um, hopefully your Sunday's been good. It's probably getting close to winding down for you. You guys are eight hours ahead, right? Uh, it's about 6 p.m. Time to enjoy the evening. But yeah, um, some other nice things that uh, we've done with our app is interesting. Why can't I toggle? Um, that's broken. <laughs> I can't get into the um, into the mobile view. It's gonna be a little frustrating. Let's go ahead and grab browser. Go to localhost. Bring this up. I did want to show that you know we've got mobile built in by default. So you know as we as we move up in size, things um, appropriately resize. Go to our all articles. You know we've removed the images here as we grow. Images come back, and we're using um, Angular. Um, We're using the Angular, um, not material, it's the, um, the CDK, the Angular CDK to do this. We're, we're, using, um, we're using DOM listeners that are giving us the ability to do it. But yeah, we're fully responsive here. We're fully responsive here. Um, and again, you can see that as we grow in size, um, our layouts change and our images show up or they don't. Um, and if we go to a specific article, again, you know, at the smaller size, um, the font size, we, we, we spent a good deal of time. Um, so the font size here changes based on how big, um, you know, how big our viewport is. And if we refresh this, this article to get like a, smaller title, which it's not going to do because <laughs> it's all random. And it wants to just generate long titles to do. Now this one might work. So as we get smaller, no, it's still going to keep going to the next line. I feel like, um, Futurama episode where Bender's sentenced to death um, and they use a random number generator instead of a countdown. Remaining cold in Sweden, a good day for some side products projects. Um, and we just got out of the cold stuff here in Utah. Um, so I'm feeling for you. Okay, here we go, right? Um, if this size didn't change, then when we go you know, if the next size down, um, it would have wrapped. But because we're listening to the DOM and, uh, you know, based on the size, at this size, it doesn't work very well, but we've been looking at the iPhone in particular um, and also the Pixel 7. Um, and these are all working just fine. Uh, like even on the SE, it's not bad. Um, one thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we, we look at our images and stuff, right? But we are, we're going to um, eventually 
have this zoom effect going on. Um, and that's what we're going to move into next once we get all of the um, host binding stuff fixed. Um, so um, we're going to be using um, animations to basically, as we scroll, this will shrink um, using parallax, um, which is another thing I need to figure out how to use the parallax for this. Um, and one thing we might look at is um, getting rid of, like, this takes up 50% of the viewport, right? And then we've got the, the header at the top also. Based on how much viewport we've got, we may not start there, right? We may start smaller. Um, we go larger. Um, we're taking up a lot less of the viewport here. So uh, we, we can use a bigger image. The nice thing about um, the HTML that we're using is that the proportions stay the same. And so you'll see that this bird is proportionally the same. And these waves are proportionally the same. The distance here and here, right? As we go, the bird stays the same, the waves stay the same. And we just start to see more of the image as the aspect ratio changes, which is a really cool um, thing that you can do um, with um, HTML. And we're using uh, inspect it. We're using the object cover to account uh, to do this, which is really, really cool that um, just with one CSS class, um, well, it's not even a CSS class, right? It's a style. It's just this object fit cover. The um, object cover comes from, it comes from Tailwind. So Tailwind is what's giving us the class, this object cover class. Um, but it's just the object fit. And if we turn this off, you'll see that already we're getting weird skewing and the, the bird looks bad. It starts to get better as the aspect ratio gets better. And here, now we're squashed flat because the aspect ratio is um, smaller than it is wider. Um, so that object fit cover winds up doing some really nice stuff for us, right? Now all of our ratios stay the same. And it just basically winds up, you know, moving the image um, to the center and things like And we could use offsets too if there are parts of the images that we cared about. These are randomly generated images, so I don't care that much. Um, but I'm wondering why arc allow me like it's turned on right now but it's not is weird but anyway we'll we'll be taking a look at these animations and you can see the animations showing up here um they're, they're popping in just over here right above the document head um, so the, the view transitions. Um, we'll be taking a look at those more. I'm curious. Here. Um, grab the animation. That to the top. Um, and so if we pause this and I click, we've got our animation here. Um, and there's there's not a whole lot um, that's going on. Really, it's just doing a fade in, fade out animation, and that's because um, of the way I set things up. And I'm getting I'm I'm nerd sniping myself. We'll get back to this. I'm curious why? I need to figure that out. Open. Okay. Anyway, back to what we were doing before before I nerd snipe myself. Go back here. And, um, we can see that we just moved stuff. I was gonna commit this, but I think I'm gonna do it all in one. So again, we're gonna go look and we're gonna find another defined metadata. And again, we've got this class. Grab all of this, 
So our defined metadata here, we can just add our class equals that. And this is for our header component. So our header component, ooh, look at that. I got double quotes, not good. There we go. Now, if we go back to our browser, our header looks fine. We inspect it again and see that we've got all of our stuff that we moved is now on the header itself. And I like to make sure that we do that. Hey, Wiseman Z, welcome to the stream and thank you for saying hi. Good to have you here. Thanks for joining. Making sure that I'm keeping up both chats and I'm not missing. All right, so we, we've fixed that one. Um, let's go add, find another one here. Again, this one has two bindings on it. Um, so we've got a style binding and a class binding. We're gonna take these and we're just gonna move them straight onto the template. Let's see what happens. There we go. We're gonna go in and we're gonna say, hey, my class is that. Go ahead and toggle these quotes. We get appropriate quotes. Make sure find this appropriately. Boom. All these quotes. There we go. Um, I don't like the way that it is styled this. And that's that's one thing. Um, like if we try to run prettier on this, um, it doesn't really do anything because it doesn't know how to do um, analog file. One thing I haven't looked at, and maybe we could. Pretty here. Use prettier for SFC script tag component. Um, view. Really? So we could use view to do, because a lot of that stuff we do, um, is there a way? And this, a light theme, I don't know why, um, but we're in the option. Have with parser. Specify which parser. Parser automatically infers the the parser from the input file. So you shouldn't have to change this, but we're using something different. So if I'm curious um, if we go inside of here, parser. Uh, valid option. Specify which parser do you automatically infers the parser from the input file path. JavaScript features, blah, blah, blah. The custom parser API has been removed in 3.0. Use plugins instead. Can 
I do? I go here. Is just use the same tab. Um, so a prettier change parser or extension um, uses a parser based on the input file. Yep. No. The top level doing so tables. Format source. Okay, but how do I do that? Um, custom file extension. Ports configuration overrides. Parser HTML. It works sometimes in the VS Code extension, but the big caveat here is VS Code must also blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, So it looks like we could probably do some overrides. Um, is there an override section? Configuration file. Basic configuration. Configuration overrides. Here we go. Boom. Okay, that's what we want. So if we go to our prettier RC, that of here should be able to do, and the Mac has broken my brain from here. I should be able to do overrides inside of here. We go files. Do star analog. Here we do parser option. And there isn't an analog parser, but there is an angular parser. I'm curious what happens here. We use the angular parser. Format with prettier, unsupported type, doesn't. Prettier. Um, let's go back to our prettier RC. Let's see our server. It works. Actually, let's go take a look at our browser really quick and just make sure. Yeah, we've just got to do option. Setting the parser option. Yeah, overrides, files, options, parser. Yeah, sometimes I go the creator of Volar tweet. Thing about using Volar instead of Angular service. Really? What is Volar? Volar. Perform Volar set. Really? So is there an Angular? Interesting. 
in here. I need to look at this. Thank you for bringing that up, Wiseman. I hadn't actually heard of Woolert, um, and now I have something I need to take a look at. So we've got we've got the view partner set up. And we're following the same here, right? Options parser, HTML. Tell associations. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. These are cool. So file association. Custom language identifier. Can we do file associations the prettier RC? We did change the parser. Curation, setting the parser option. And that's exactly what we did here. Um, use it only inside of overrides, yeah. Editor config, and I do like to use editor config along with prettier um, because then your editor and everything else understands it. Um, we do have files, options, and parser. Is there a notion of file? There are options we have here. Cursor offset, editor config. It is using the editor config. I think that one defaults to true. Line, file path. Parser. Range end. Oh, that one looks good. Um, Cause we are trying to use the view parser. Um, the other thing I probably need to do is just make sure that my prettier um, settings is using. Not, it didn't find my prettier RC. Rest. Why not keep that in place? The WebStorm will use the prettier package in the node modules directory and prettier RC creation files located in the same folder as a current file or any of the parent folders. Um, so it should find that. And if we go down here, yeah, prettier. So if we go here, it doesn't have let me old outdated plugins. Um, and we can look at the editor. Like I, I like this about WebStorm. We can jump into the editor config and stuff about the files we're editing. Got Tailwind, TypeScript, and ESLint that it's picking up on. 
but it hasn't picked up on prettier. I'm wondering, just try restarting and see if it only reads the prettier config. No, it wouldn't make sense because I couldn't change the prettier config. Yeah, it's still not picking up your config here. There are other prettier settings. We've got that um, again in here. Got this section in the documentation. Take a look at that section in the form documentation. Um, it would be nice, and I know I'm getting distracted here. But we'll we'll get this. But it would be nice. Where you start, make sure you have Node.js. Yep. Configured in your project, open the settings dialog, go to languages and frameworks and Node.js. Prettier plugin is enabled. It is. Install it. Um, Form enables reformat with prettier action as soon as you install it. The prettier package from the closest node modules. Annual prettier configuration. You tell it where. Run on reformat code. Yep. In the run for file section. Reformat code automatically on save. We've got this all set up. Default format here. Run for files. Code styles on prettier for this. How can Let's, um, one thing we can do, go to the command prompt, PM and we should be able to just run, and it's not NX, NPM. So within here, is there, I'm curious, PNPM NX run many, We're, we'll set our target, um, we'll do dash T um, prettier, see what we get. Does NX know how to run prettier? Or projects? I don't have prettier targets set up for any projects. If I do PNPM prettier dash C. Check the options and then um, let's just do some star star slash source slash star 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 dot star uh, star star slash dot star. I think that will work. 
Yeah. So it couldn't figure out the icon. And it found seven issue. Um, let's see if it can do analog. There we go. So there are warnings here. Um, and I get better. Check if the given files. Um, print a human friendly summary message and the paths to unformatted files. Statement, cache, no color. Logs. It would be nice if, um, and maybe we can just do this. Let's just check this file. Boom. The code style issues were found. So Prettier is definitely picking up code style issues. But if I try to format with Prettier here, oh, hey, that worked. Um, so now if we go back to the secondary article, I do reformat with prettier and boom. Oh, we figured it out. Thank you. Um, oh, that's so nice. Uh, to have have prettier do reformatting. So here, if I just save, I'm not getting it. If I do reformat with prettier. Look at that. Um, and we are using Vue for this. Um, so we're getting help for we're getting help for the script and stuff like that. Um, Wise Matt, I'm going to take a look at Voler. Um, thank you for that tip. I think that'll be huge help. One thing it doesn't seem to understand is the four. Syntax for Angular. Um, I'm curious. We go to our prettier RC. We use Angular here. Now we come back here. That tells us that. Hey, there's a whole bunch of issues in our analog file. If I go and like this one, the Angular language file, it should understand that. So if we reformat this with already properly formatted. Your DevOps, even I guess that's from other projects that I've worked on. Um, one thing we could do now is we could go into the prettier settings, that to run for a lot. So it is set up to already run for analog. I wonder if I need to restart um, again after 
making that change over to Angular. Um, it's less of a breaking change for me on this than the other stuff. But now if I reformat with prettier, reformat with prettier, hey, hey. That looks a lot better. My script functions look good. That looks good. Let's go here where we've got like style functions and let's just reformat with prettier. It's all changed. Um, nice. So my styles are looking okay. Oh, this, this is nice. Um, at least now I can reformat, even if it's not automatically reformatting for me, um, I can manually reformat. Um, so I should be able to now go in here and just add my class. Say that, hey, my class is the, um, go and, um, so with, um, WebStorm, you can automatically widen. You can do the same in VS Code. Um, class. And by automatically widening, um, I'm just holding down Alt and Shift on my Windows keyboard. Uh, and I think, oh, on Mac, it's Option Up. But as I do that, you can see that it's widening what it's selecting which is really, really helpful, right? So if I'm here inside of a class and I wanna grab that, I can grab that, or I can grab everything, or I can widen and go get the quotes, or get the you know, the attribute, or I can get the whole tag, or I can get the open and closing tag, or I can get everything inside, right? Uh, really, really nice um, feature. And it works the same inside of functions too. Like if I wanna just now get rid of the metadata, boom, and now it's gone. I didn't get the quote or the semicolon. But curious. Let's change this quote. Right. This this is a non-standard quote. Um save that. Oh, it's automatically picking it up. So it's reformatting with prettier. Things look good. Um that's really cool. Because that allows me to do something else that I really wanted to do. Oh, I've already got it installed. Um, so I've got the organize attributes and I've got the organize imports already installed with Prettier. Um, thing it's not doing is it's not grabbing, not using object anymore. Uh, but we can clean that up ourselves. Um, there, there's going to be just some stuff that we were probably going to have to do just because of the way um, that, um, yeah, I mean, it's pre-release. Um, so I'm not super concerned about it, but I'm so happy. And one of the cool things about this, um, this one isn't going to show it, but we can... Um, so here, like if I were to add like a name equals, I don't know, Jason, ID Jason, because I like to make sure that all of my stuff is formatted the way I want or is named after me, right? Um, but you can see that I had those at the beginning and um, because of the prettier plugin I have that understands Angular, it's reformatting things. Um, and we could do, you know, if I add a, um, if I add like a click handler here. I froze. Hopefully I'm not dropping frames because I froze. Um, okay, we're good. We've got our click handler equals, and here we can just console.log. Oh, console doesn't exist. So here we'll just alert okay, Jason is in awesome, right? And so 
it's going to order things consistent, which I really love. Didn't save this. It's going to clean everything up, and we're good. Oh, I'm so happy to have to have Prettier in these files. I rely on Prettier quite a bit, um, and so happy that I'm actually go and commit this now. Here. And so just to review what we did, um, if you guys are, are using analog files yourself, um, you could use view or angular here. You just need to add the override, um, tell it the files that you want to override, um, and then set the parser um, to be view or analog. Um, I turned on view and dense script and style because if I decide to go back to view, that'll be nice. Um, but so far, I'm very happy with that. So now I removed a bunch of defined metadata. We're moving it into our class here. We're also getting nice, prettier formatting based on settings that we have in our um, editor config and our prettier file. One thing to be aware of, like this two spaces here comes from our editor config. So we're using two spaces, space and two as our indent. We're using the F8 character set. Um, we're adding a final new line and we're removing um, trailing white space. Um, You know, there, there are other things we could do here to override prettier. Um, thing I don't have is the max line lengths. Um, so if we go take a look at your configuration, inside of here, there should be a max line. the options go take a look in here max line length print width um, but in the editor config file it's max line length um, and set prose wrap um, but inside of here I want to see what the default print width is. Oh, default is 80. OK, I'm good with that. Um, I used to go in and override this to um, 100 or 120. Um, and found, I found a bunch of people saying online that there's documentation um, that 80 is good. And one of the big reasons that people say to use 80 is like if we go side by side here, um, even though my monitor is a lot wider and I could go wider than 80, um, a lot of people work in these kind of flows, right? Um, and so you can see 80 characters quite a ways. And so um, 80 winds up being a good format. And I think I'm using um, column markers, I think that's called. Columns. Are they rulers? I always forget. It's always um, because this is at at eighty out here, um, and I forget how I added that. I always forget how I did it, and then I have to spend time googling it. Um, but I, I like to have a marker here at 80 just so that I can see where I am. So as I'm coding, if 
for whatever reason the formatting doesn't work, I can um, give it hints that hey, I'm over the 80 that I like. Um, so let's go back and look for more defined metadata. Again, we're just going to grab all of this and throw it onto our split. There we go. And now when I save this, oh, thank you. Cleaned up so much. And there is some weirdness here. Like the router link exists here, but it doesn't know how to tell that, right? Um, and the article blurb exists here, but it doesn't know how to tell that. Um, go ahead and clean that up. Bit of that. More metadata. So this is one where I'm way out belong beyond the uh, 80. So here, this is where things like prettier are a big help. Because I'm way out beyond 80. Still am. Interesting. But the, the nice thing about this is you'll notice that it's formatted things same order on my inputs or define metadata. There we go. And so now the number of things that um, I need to find metadata for goes way down. Like this class right here, um, it's really the only reason we even need the import. And I actually don't even think we need the script header anymore. Um, let's, let's see what happens here. If I just take this out and boom, we save this. Um, what happens? Did I break my compile? Get out of here. My compile doesn't look broken, but let's just make sure that it isn't. So we're going to run this again. So there we go. It looks like it compiled. Um, analog isn't liking this, not analog, but um, WebStorm isn't liking this. It's telling me, hey, you should fix this. Um, I think it comes down to this, the, the special import that I'm using here. Um, but so this is the home page. Um, if I've broken it, then the home page should be broken. So if we go back to our application, Go to the home page. Like I did break the home. It looks like I do need that script tag. So let's put that back. We'll run this again. The compile is there, the one I want. Yeah, OK. That's good to know. Don't know why working. Come over here and just hit Control-Shift-A. Um, probably just a bug in. Uh, Arc, take a look. Where the settings are. I check for updates. 
yeah, we're on a we're on a pre-release here of seventeen zero seventeen two. We're on a you know, there's gonna be some bugs. Um just report that. We should go well. Um they'll, they'll fix it. But going back to the home, things are looking good. So with the imports, we will need script tags. I'm sure I'll be corrected on that if if that's wrong. Right now, it looks like that's the case. So here again. This and this is so nice. You, oh, so nice. Just be able to specify that on our um, stuff, and then this reform. Having code consistently formatted the way that I'm used to seeing it is a big help. This is, I guess, one of the things about um, we want to call it, about Hellwind. Um, the, the classes can get pretty big here, uh, and that's where you know I'm getting close to the line lengths. Like this class here, actually fairly large. Well, I mean, if, if that was really a big concern for me, one thing we could do is we could go create our own custom classes, um, add apply rules that would bring that down. I, I don't know. That big of a deal. No. Even though I specifically called it out, right? <laughs> so here we go. Classes here. And this is making our files just so much smaller, which is awesome. The footer. And the only reason we even need the script tag, the router link, we go back to the articles. Without that, this would just be a template which is one of the things that I really love about C, file component. So here we go. Here's the last file component that we need to make changes to. What is the, so you can go the opposite. I always forget what it is. I'll extend alt shift right control shift w that's a I think this is a vs code um binding we are going key map the VS code copy to I don't even know what these different ones are but inside of here you shrink selection there it is right there well I want to change this Alt shift left arrow. Move that one. Apply it and okay. So now I should be able to hit that and expand it and shrink it. There we go. Which 
should get cleaned up on its own. I don't have to remember to do it anymore. Here, we can just go to our class. Paste this in. Boom. Yeah, all my extra lines are disappearing and all of that stuff. Um, router link, I think we are using it. Not using it in here. Have to be because the welcome to click on it. Oh yeah, here we go. Router link. Yeah. All right. So now if we go take a look, we've got all of this cleaned up. Um, so. Good, I'm going to be getting my semicolons. I'm curious about. Did I set up ESLint to run on analog file? Did not. Go ahead and apply that. Okay, and now I should start getting yes lint rules. So they should be picking up things that I do wrong. Um, like here, if I do uh, if true goals um, one. Yeah. So now we're getting. Um, Oh, this is probably not from ESLint. That one from. Condition is always false. True and one have no overlap. Um, I don't think that's the case. Um, maybe it is, and maybe I'm wrong. Let's. Go to arc, arc comp, say true, double equals one. Yeah. Um, if I do true, triple equals, that's false. Um, but double equals is coercion. Um, and that should be picked up. I wonder what's giving me. That. I think this is um I think this is a web storm. We'll have to see if ESLint picks up in I have ESLint set up properly. So it's picking it up manually. I've got it set to run for JavaScript, HTML view, and analog files. Um, we'll just have to see. It is picking up that it's Tailwind and ESLint. Interestingly, the Angular language services. Like if I go to a TF. This index.ts. We look at the, we've got the TypeScript Tailwind ESLint. Oh, interesting. The Angular language service isn't there, but we can see that ESLint is running here. Um, TypeScript isn't running. So like if I do um, var test, and then I do um, console.log test, 
Um, yeah, it should be picking up that this might not have been initialized. And it is. Let or add. And if, yeah, if we do um, convert it to a let, um, then this should definitely be an error. Interesting. The TypeScript isn't running our analog file. Um, the other thing we've got going on here, expected token that. Um, so that's why ESLint isn't running on the file. It's choking right away. Um, however, the TypeScript language, let's take a look at If we go look at the settings, I'll type. If we go to file types, out of here, if we look for the analog. We do have that. Oh, well, we'll let it be for now. Um, a lot of this stuff will be caught. One thing I think I am going to see if we can our yes. Here do we have um type script. There's just a wonder if you need to add like the analog stuff. If I do right, I'm gonna add that, and here we do. Uh, um, and this may break stuff, and we may wind up undoing it. Um, I'm just curious if we can get some of the Angular help in our analog files. So 
now that we've done that, what we can do is we can just go here and we can just go um, do run many and instead of prettier, we're going to run um, and let's see if we've broken stuff, right? Um, so it's going to run the linter and singular blog lint index.html has an unexpected token. Next time, yeah, that is legit. Um, but it's probably because we're trying to run yes, Lynn. Well, that problem. It doesn't like what we did. <laughs> it's saying, um, yes, lint settings, that's fine. We're going to take out the analog stuff for now. And we are going to go and we're just going to revert. All right, all those. And so after that, the only thing that we've done is we've gone through and we moved all the metadata to template bindings. So if we look, we can see that that's what we're doing across all of these. Go ahead and stage all of these. Moved, find metadata. which is an amazing upgrade to um, analog. I really, really love this. Having stuff here makes it so much nicer. All right. Two minutes left until I should end this. But I do want to go take a look. Go ahead and close a look at so so this has a whole bunch of information in but one thing got are these view trends um first thing we can do move these out to our styles dot So this is all the stuff where you add apply. You can add this to the base layer. The view transition here, fine. Um, but here, we, we need to look at the transitions that are happening. This is where we want to
So inside of this documentation, um, you know, it's available in Chromium-based browsers, doesn't work in Firefox or Safari. We can go take a look at the compatibility here. Um, and start view transition is not supported in either of those, so we won't get our view transition. Um, but we, we can see that we get all of the options in Chrome and Edge. So anything that's um, Chromium based, we're going to get our view transitions. And then there are a couple of nice articles that they link to. Take a look at that. Take a look at this one. These are both nice um, because they give like demo sites and stuff. I spent a good deal of time reading this to figure out what's going on. The view transition, um, and you know, we can contain, but we're, we're giving it a header icon name here. Groups. So we can do sliding anime. So this is a well, well first of all got the animation none on the old and the new. Um, we're not getting the duration. That's the other thing a bit weird here. Um, and this is, oh, actually, let's, let's see if Arc can do it. If we go to my app, bring out our we're going to pause our animation. Here we are. We're, we're in this article, right? And when I click, I've got this animation. I mean, because it's paused, now we can use the scrubber to go through it. Um, we're still at 250 milliseconds. So we've got a problem there. We can see if we bring this out. Image transition is targeting the appropriate, but we've only got the root trend. Let that play. Then let's pause it again and remove all of these. And let's try clicking again. Boom. This. We're still getting we're still getting just a small um, it's it's not running this group. Um, and the animation none here the height, I think we don't want this. I think instead of this, we want the width. Um, and that should keep the width that amount and allow the height to change. The other thing I think we need to do, and um, may need to move this out of the layer by that. So again, we're going to go back into R and refresh this. Allow these all to play. that one and now we can pause it and boom we actually did get a trend pause there we go. 
So still not getting the group. Even though it is seeing that in the group, we've got the root transition going on, but this image trans way out. So now if we scrub this, So the other thing we can do is oh you know what prettier Yes, us and by that team. Not going to run that because got an, it, it's counting these as errors because it's old. Like, it doesn't know what these are uh, here. Doesn't know what height is. But I think one other thing we need to do is just do, um, do image transition. Um, and here, what we will do is we will just do um, view look. So it's image, view transition name. I wonder if I've got the animation turned off, if that. Let's, let's see with the image transition. It, it's taking longer now. We can see the view transition is now taking longer. Um, I think the animation none was part of my problem. Um, so if we come back, refresh this. Yeah, we're getting much longer view. Popping at 250. Oh, yeah. Um, this view transition old root. Stopping it. Seconds. As soon as I change this, the none refresh. Oh, we can see it's already, yep. We can see that it's already um, animating a lot longer. Here, we can see the scrub. We're getting a bit of a fade in between the two. 
and it's going a lot longer up to 1.5 seconds. So it's taking a lot longer for this to fade in. And if you play it, getting that longer fade in. Um, but we don't want the cross fade. Um, so here, um, what we want to do is we want to say view um, dash transition dash old. Here we want to say image transition. Um, and we're, we're going to say animation none. That's going to turn off that crossfade animation. So go. And now if we go take a look, we should see. Refresh this. Yeah, we're not getting old transition. We are. Interesting. Still getting that crossfade. Um, curious why. Oh, here. Um, this is our image here. There's our fade in, and there's the lighters. Here, this one, we're. What is this? At? There's no animation here or here. We've got the none, and actually, I don't even need this class because I'm not using it. Um, and I think we can move this back into the other stuff. Um, because it wasn't what I thought it was. Um, we could even scope this to the host, I believe. Fine. We should still see the animations playing out. Um, so if we refresh this, it's broken. What did I break? What if we move this stuff outside of the post? Oh, this was in NG Deep before, wasn't it? Um, we go take a look. I believe Yeah, I had it inside of an NGD um, bound to that host. That's how it was working. You put this inside of an NGD. Keep, go, boom. Now we're inside of the host. And now we can see that the article's there. Interesting. That's weird. Oh, it's because the animation paused. Now, if we shrink that, we should see. Yep. We've got our transition groups. In that one, so it wasn't what I thought it was. Um,
we do want to add back the the old view transition. So view transition that we want none on the old because we we don't want to play the old transition. Um, this one now we've got the one point five duration and. I think we can just do transition. Here we can say height um, and five seconds. Just see what happens here. Um, and this is the tough stuff about it, right? Uh, one. Here it will allow our animations to play. Pause them. That one and then boom. Interesting. So here there there's a demo site. Position name that. I wonder if I need to contain. It's contained paint is just allowing it to grow outside of the bounds. So using a few transition group, they're setting the animation duration on that group. Other than that, they're not doing any. Crazy. And all you have to do to get view transitions to work is just call the um, JavaScript start view. What if I contain paint? I'm also curious if I just do view transition. Group, image transition, and here let's just set our animation duration, and we'll set this to one five seconds. See if that slows us down at all. Um, so if we go back. To our browser, our application. Save this. Pause. Boom. I'm to go pause again. There we go. Aren't getting. So there's the old image. We can see our group here. Our animation is the fade in, fade out. Old image is doing the fade in, fade out. And these are the keyframes on that fade in, fade out.
I don't think this stuff is working in the ng deep. Um, Because it's constrained to the host. I think that's part of the problem. We put this back in our styles.sc. Oh, yeah, it doesn't understand the tailwind state. Reason? So if we put this back, boom. Um, Now, if we go back to our animation, let it play. Look at that. Yep, we're getting. So that is part of the problem. So the um, transition here, if we look, you can see that this is the, oh, I broke it. We can see we've got all of these transitions, right? Um, these are running out to 1.5 seconds, but it's this lighter trend. That's the fade in, the lighter trend. So here, this to the curious if I just tell it I don't want any anime. Now, I don't think we're even getting the fade in, fade out animation that we were getting before. And clean this up and we pause and we click. that these anime running pause it and now if we click our animation and we can see we're still getting the fade in animation in the lighter anime Also getting old animation fade out. So the, the, the entire page is getting kind of a blending here. Um, and could go um, could go view transition old root let's just make it a star here we'll just view transition everything um, we're going to take out this we're also going to say here that we just want to go height of var height. Let's just see what happens with that out. We'll allow that to we need to refresh.
pause it and we'll go again. And here we go. So now I've made everything slower. But I want to turn that off. Um, the crossfade is what it starts with by default. Um, and they use the plus lighter in That's just making it take longer. They just made the crossfade take longer. They've got a fade in, fade out. Here there's... transitioning multiple elements there was a now only child pseudo class Got the starting the view transition is what we're doing, and that's how we're getting the stuff. Um, <clears throat> the blending sits on top. Interest. Got this. So here, if we just say animation none. Off. Oh, normal. Not getting the now we're not getting the uh, the weird flash right fresh the out go so now to this we pause it and boom here you can see we're out at one point five. Getting the fade out because I've completely taken away the animation. Well, there's no animation. You get trans here and just turn off animation for all here need to get an animation that will scale us in that's the problem now that i've got that turned off
pause and discuss. We don't, I mean, the view transition for the root is still doing the lighter. Which we don't want. Um, getting like this weird, it's even weirder now because we don't have the crossfade anymore. Now we just got the lighter stuff. The whole page is flashing. So here we can say that we want none of that, but we also want view transition new, but only for the root off. And so now I'm probably going to get no view transitions if we refresh this. You can see we aren't getting the flash anymore. What we've got these two groups, um, but this is the one that we modify. Um, and so here, if we look at this. If we turn off animation none, this. happens if I just do this and then we go back to our animation. We need to... Oh, I broke it again. Uh -huh. um, let's turn off the animation. Oh. What we want to do is transition the... Um, I want to transition the height. Um, was inside of here there's a dock as a test application of freezing other animations in the JavaScript We've got our view transitions turned on. There was a There was a test site um, that used images and lead light. What's the top of this? Yeah, the basic view transition demo. So if we look at this demo here, when we move, see how this grows and shrinks? Um, this is the what I'm trying to get. We inspect this in. Specifically, we want this. The fig caption. Actually, let's go take a look. Animations here. Um, we're going to pause and we'll go do like a short one. And boom, we've got this here. So they've got the fade in and fade out running at 
it's but it's this um if you look this fig caption is targeted specifically at that caption um and they have the lighter on this, but they've also got a fade in and a fade out. Look at this animation. It is making that's one longer. That's the growth. That's not it. A new I'm just trying to figure out how they're go here animation. see it growing and it's in this root right so the group root has we look that's the root so it's the caption so it's got a width and a height. And then it's got this image pair. The old has the height of 100%. It's still running the fade in, fade out. And then the new, this is the crazy thing is, um, they're still using the fade in, fade out. But they're not special. Where this gets a little bit crazy. That. Pause that and go here. Try again. Pause. Pause. There we go. So now. It's scaling in, and I'm not sure how they're maintaining this. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. I don't go. Go take a look. So here's the demo. But this demo Here's the source code for this demo. So here we've got our figure. We're looking for the view transition. Easy.
Okay. Let's say view transition old will be transition new. We'll go to 1.5 seconds. Here we're gonna turn off the animation none. I'm going to say that we're going to keep the width 100%. You don't need the height anymore. So very, very similar to what they were doing. The only thing I've added are these blend modes. Go back to our app. See, we're getting everything. All at 250 million. If we look, transition, we've got our view transition set here. Getting the next size. Setting that new size, and we just set it on. Setting that variable, this is all done inside of a start view. Um, I mean, the, the other thing we can do is just make this an AC. I don't, not really helping at all. Fact, all of our it's here. To apply the group just goes to everything. Now everything should be slower. Thing maybe we want to do is just say, hey, we aren't going to contain this stuff anymore. Now we can see that it's taking a lot longer for it to run. The view transition staying there much longer. Um, I'm here and we refresh. Things are taking way longer to run. That height is immediate.
Is it that I'm using um, CSS variables instead of, is that my problem? The way the way view transitions work is the browser takes a picture before it happens. So when you when you call start view transition, the browser basically basically takes a picture. When it ends, the browser um, takes another picture, and it creates a transition. I think that's my problem. Um, we say the width is this, and then we say the height. You know what? Um, I think I know what the problem is. Um, if we take a look, um, the template has the height on it. We're changing the height of the template, but the image is what we're trying to animate. Um, and that's what we changed down here, right? Um, this grid image transition. Um, in doing the wrong thing. I've been hitting my head against this for a long time. Um, really, this is where we need to be. Yeah, this should be our image transition stuff here. And so now if we go into this, we just add our dot image transition class. Here we can say our view transition name is image transition. I think that fixes it. So if we allow this to run, darn it. <laughs> um, broken something. That out. Let's let's shorten. Let's make this point five seconds. And I'm curious if I uncomment this stuff and just see what happens. <clears throat> Go ahead. Resize problems here. 
Pause it. No, it's taking about a half second. Or is wonder if I can do like an at key. Here, we'll just do um, here, just go to Doesn't like that. Um, does that? Oh, the. The change is almost immediate. Go inspect this. In image transition gives us the image transition name of YouTube. Our animation. Pause. Do the transition. Yeah, I have the image transition on the wrong thing now. Um, that's absolutely... That should definitely be on. Right. The grid temp row. Okay, so image. Pass is that div, and that was being changed. 
Um, but the height isn't changing. That's the problem. We do min dash content. Here we do our height. Does that change things? No, we're still. Hmm. Play that. Clear all of this. We look at, so there we go. Our image is back to this. Um, Allow this one to play through. Turn off. Pause it. And... It's already did that, like, not animating it, but that change has already gone through. So before the image animation even takes place, We've already resized. And that's why we're not getting the zooming effect that we want. Like we. Because we're, we're now definitely animating the height on that div. We're also giving the image transition to that div. We take this stuff. Here, let's just say that Bar. Let's take that out of here for a second and just see what happens. So It's happening before the animation even plays. Um, we can see that over here in this graph. So the, the size change is already done before the animation change happens. So Take this back to 1.5 seconds just so that we get plenty of time.
to animation change. See what happens. Press that. Follow this and pause it and see. So here we go. Think as we're applying it to the old and the new. What happens here? The new image gets the new transition, and the old image doesn't. Take a look at our animations. Clear this out. Let it run and fresh. is for image pause that image transition is isolated Doesn't know what problem. So I think this is the change animation. Oh, what I'm telling it, I think give it an, an amount of time. Go so for like 0.5 seconds. I'm going to So again, we're we're seeing that change happen. This is the change animation here, but nothing's
Hey, something crazy. You're from here. Let's do scale Y to zero. Here we'll do a scale dash Y of. Just see what happens. Still, that that change is immediate. So here's change, and there's the ease in on it, but it's not it's not changing. Um, I wonder if I need. Hmm. I'm gonna have to play with this some more. Um, I'll figure it out. Um, uh, gone over by about an hour, but thank you everybody for hanging out with me. There's, there's something going on with this animation that I'm just not understanding. Um, why my mind doesn't work the same way. Um, so I'll need to figure out what's going on. Um, and it, it could be that I can't animate CSS variables. Seems weird. I couldn't. Um, and it's working because I don't have height anywhere else in out of here. Taking it out of our min content, like this is all min content. So the, the size transitions is definitely all happening here. So I don't know what's going on. I'll I'll get it figured out and we'll go through it tomorrow night. Um, so yeah, thank you.